show on the internet where we watch VHS tapes uh, that we find at thrift stores and garage sales. We found over 11,000 of them and uh, it's Tuesday night and I can't wait. We got a good one. We got a, we got a special guest tonight. I noticed you're somewhere else though. You look like there's maybe slightly less dusty or maybe it's, it's just as dusty. I'm in a different basement, but it's just as dusty okay. it's because there's exercise equipment here. So like, yeah, this is my parents' basement and this is where You'd think it was like their exercise room, but no, it's their storage place for exercise equipment that they don't use anymore. So next, next week you'll be coming live from a play it against sports, and then uh, uh, I just I'm gonna just be in front of exercise equipment that doesn't get used. Great, yeah, uh, um, corner. And uh, we have a special guest, by the way, tonight. Um, Dan Opsel, uh, writer for the Tonight Show, and also a, currently a director. Um, yep. Who, 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 for, he was a director at the Tonight Show. And yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Former, oh, I'm sorry. Former, yes. former yeah. director at the Tonight Show. He, yeah, he left a while ago. But, but anyway, uh, yeah. talented re- dude, super funny. Yeah, and uh, he has been a collector of flubs, which are people messing up, um, usually in live high pressure situations on TV. I think everybody knows what a flub is. I don't think you need to spell out a flub to to the Melinda's do you D- disagree because we, we have a long discussion with Dan we pre-taped it about the difference between a flub and a blooper so, well the thing is he, he's like an academic when it comes to this yes. stuff he, he really knows it and like one question that you had Nick that I thought was really astute was what was the difference between a flub and a blooper and he answers it perfectly he knows the answer to these things he collects these things he, he'll go into detail about how he collects these things but he has a library of them this is a master yeah, class in flubs but uh first of all how is everyone's cap de monte weekend outstanding yeah yeah mine was mine was fine um my family's super religious so it was just um, a lot of like praying to saint capodimonte and, um <laughs> right praying to those two porcelain birds and it was just you know it's not yeah. a lot of fun yeah george well i i was very, very hungover. spiritual very what? Hungover. you were hung over oh yeah it gets wild um, we, uh, we like to start uh, the shows with a Found Footage Festival classic, so here's today's. You caught me with my pants down, but no one sells carpet or waterbeds for less. This one has to do with the next webinar we're doing. We did a webinar in June that was a smash hit, sold out, 500 people watching live. Um, and we decided to do another one in August, and uh, it's for the movie Computer Beach Party, which we've been obsessed with for, I don't know, 10, 11 years. Here's uh, several VHS copies um, that we have of it, and uh, it's, it's, it barely qualifies as a movie. I mean, we find a lot of movies. We don't really care about movies generally, but this one is remarkable. Yeah, and it, because it's one of those movies that feels like they're making it up as they go along, and I think that at a certain point they either ran out of money for it or they just didn't know where the story was going. So they just put up a a screen of text explaining what happened in this, like the next hour of the movie. Like it's, it's unbelievable. It's so good. And it's just painful. We toured with it for a while. We did like live screenings. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to do a a brand new screening here on the webinar function and uh, track that George has tracked down some uh, special guests too. Maybe. I can't hear George. I can't either. George, I certainly, here. sorry, I certainly tracked down some people. I hope we'll, we get them. Okay. okay, well, let me just play a clip that we've never played before to remind people how uh, amazing this movie is. This is uh, 
the horoscope scene, I was just rewatching it today. This is a, a horoscope scene and you'll get to see the computer that is used to plan the beach party. There just isn't a course on how to be a mayor's daughter. Some days I think my stars are really, really out of whack. Really? Well, listen, what about your horoscope? Have you seen your horoscope for today? Come on, I'll show you. One of the amazing things that computers can hey, do. What's your sign? Aries. Love is heading your way. Your promise to someone else, you'll be sorry for it. Skips What's over a large chunk of text. Capricorn, see what my day has in store. I'm a Capricorn. So your the day forecast has forecast for the morning hours is uncertain. However, the evening hours will be a warm 90 degrees. Why not throw a party? I'll throw a party. If I throw a party, will you come to it? Who are you inviting? Allison Dawes, the mayor's daughter, or the real Allison? The real one, of course. Good. The real Allison accepts. Now, I'd better leave. You were working on your car. Better leave. I better leave you were working on your car. It's in the scene before he was working on his car. This doesn't make any sense in context either. He just sped her up. Hey, let me just uh, point out some of the scintillating commentary you're going to get in this show, which goes on sale tonight, by the way, immediately after the show. We noticed that in this scene, um, you know, they obviously had to program a computer to do this. It says break in 110 OK on the bottom left. So that's just a little error in 12, break in 110. So the computer program they made to make the fake horoscope was, wasn't working 100% for this movie. Is that, is that a bad thing, break in 110? It, I don't it know means, what that means. On the Commodore 64, this would have meant you hit run, stop, and rest, uh, run, stop, restore to break the program because it was stuck in a loop. <laughs> now, now, why they didn't just slow it down? Well, I guess this is film, not video. So they had to, like, they were just stuck with what they had. Yeah, but, and um, mo most of this movie's dubbed over. That's just one of many inexplicable things. And that's why I'm so glad George is on this, uh, <clears throat> on this broadcast, because we wouldn't have known otherwise. Also, there aren't many computers in this movie. And I think there's maybe like two or three beach parties in it. So it's a computer beach party, but I think that's one of the few computer scenes in the actual movie. Yeah, they lean heavier on the party part. Yeah. Well, yeah. the real computer beach party is in here. In your in, heart? In, our, yeah. in your heart? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. In, inside. Oh. That's sweet, George. Spoiler George. alert. Yeah, yeah That's spoiler alert. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, foundfootagefest.com, come join us live on Saturday, August 15th. We're, we're going to be watching it. We're having a beach party. You're all invited. Um, you know, I might not wear my shirt for it. And I, yeah. I, got, some, I got some brand new uh, swim trunks. I might wear those. I'm wearing swim trunks. I'll, we'll have a beach ball, um, several beach balls. Maybe I'll inflate a, a, a baby pool and I'll, put, I'll pour beer in it. I'll lay in a beer pool. That seems like what you'd do at like a 1980s party, right? Absolutely, like in beer, yeah. In a beer pool. And then the dog would come over and like lick it up. Yeah, and, and, then, like, and then kind of look at the camera and go, huh? And you have sunglasses on? Well, we're writing our own movie now. Okay. Um, well, that's but, what I'm, all those things I'm planning to do. All right, it's going to be a big night. So, uh, so join us, foundfootagefest.com. The link's on the bottom of the page there. Hey, we got, we got a new segment that I started up last week. And man, I, I'm really excited about it because I started thinking of all these different uh, videos to include in it. It's uh, this uh, segment, we call it This Week in Flying Windows. All right, This Week in Flying Windows, it comes to us from a little video called a, Women, a Woman's Guide to Firearms. I, I don't have that video here in Wisconsin, but it's back at the office. I wish I could hold it up, but I can't. Um, it, it's, who's in it? The, the guy, I think the guy from Major Dad hosts it. What's his name? Gerald McCrady? I think so, yeah. Gerald, is that right? McCraney. McCraney, okay. He's Gerald. married to Delta Burke, right? Was he? I think so. Oh, they were a 90s power couple then. Yes. I'm going to go with it. Absolutely. Okay. Check my work, George. Uh, all right. So this one is at the end of that video where they're trying to sell you more videos from this production company. And um, so many flying windows. Oh, hey, I have the cover here. Do you want to? Uh, oh, you got it? Yeah. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah. I found it on, uh, um, I don't have the physical cover with me, but I have the, uh, 
I, ha I have the uh, image that we scanned in for our oh, book. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Let's see. Hang on a sec. Because the cover's worth showing. Otherwise, I wouldn't waste everybody's time. Yeah, but, that's a good one. Yeah. And you can see uh, Major Dad there. Do you see Major Dad on the cover? Uh, oh, yeah, right. Is that Major Dad? No, that's not Major Dad, is it? Who's Gerald the McCraney? Only... Yeah, bottom left. Major Dad. That is Major Dad? Okay. He looks different. I didn't recognize him outside of his uniform. Yeah, right. Heck, I'm, I'm going to assume your family didn't watch Major Dad. Uh, you know what? I don't remember on that one. Probably not. You would remember it. I'll you text. Remember yeah, it. you're right. Yeah, I don't think we watched Major Dad. It might have been on like after just the 10 of us, and maybe we caught it accidentally. And will, will you text your parents right now so we have an answer by the end of the show? Absolutely. I'm going to do that right now. But yeah, okay. go, go ahead with the clip. Okay, so here's uh, This Week in Flying Windows comes to us from an advertisement at the end Ooh, excuse me, at uh, the end of uh, Women's Guide to Burn. Oh, look at those windows flying. Yep, Lenny McGill Productions flies by. They just keep going. Look at how they do the overlapping windows, too. Like and different them. speeds, yeah. Yeah. And they're all, like, left to right. It's like they're migrating south. Or something. Yeah. But what's this? Huh? There might be too many flying windows. It's There's a, a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of flying windows. <laughs> Hard to keep track. Correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't this the original uh, VCR party intro before? Yes, it church? was. Very astute, Steve. Wow. Yes, it was. Yes, I'm I'm fired, this. yes. You are. Now watch, this, watch this final flying window. I think you guys are going to like what they do with this last final window. Oh! And there's windows within that window. Oh! <laughs> and then the audio stops. <laughs> Oh, man. Can you imagine being stoned and seeing that? Flying window turns into the main window that has flying windows come into that window. But only there three only of them. Three. Yeah. yeah. I <laughs> I'm with you, George. That bothered me. It's, you know. Oh. Somebody yeah, likes know, right trees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, hey, I, three windows? I already heard back yeah. from my dad. He said, I just said, I put my dad, mom, and sister all in a group text. And I said, did we watch Major Dad? My dad replied instantly, never. There's your answer. That's why I don't remember it. This <laughs> so, <was a> good <laughs> period. <laughs> yeah, because you didn't know Gerald McCraney's name right away. No. Like, like, you know the writers of ALF and you know, like, the yeah. directors and stuff like that, it, you know. But I, I knew that there was something up. Yeah. What about designing women? I assume that you guys didn't watch Absolutely. Design. Meshach Taylor loved it. Oh, you did watch that? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. did watch Designing Women. Yeah. Uh, hey, by the way, I had an idea. Once we get enough segments of Flying Windows, we yeah. do our own intro with Flying Windows of the Flying Windows. So, you know, like yes. Women's Guide to Firearms is going this way. What was the one last week? Uh, uh, it was, uh, oh, it was the, the table, table Rock. Uh, oh, yeah, down at Table Rock Lake. Yeah. And yeah. so, like, and then eventually we'll have – Eventually, by the end of this, I think we could have as many uh, flying windows as Women's Guide to Firearms. That'll be a mind blower, too, yeah. to see that once we have enough. Yes, and that's just flying Will that window. be before the bracket, the flying window bracket, where we decide which is the best of them? <laughs> it's always got to be a tournament. Everything's yeah. a tournament. Uh, oh, by the way, remember last week we talked about sponsorships. I, uh, it, it, Nick, I think one of your nice things was Mr. Sprinkles, that the chocolate sprinkle thing that you sprinkle on top of uh, ice cream. Yeah. I contacted Mr. Sprinkles. They're still around. Um, they have an email, and I emailed them and said, look, I host a show called VCR Party Live. We have a new segment called This Week in Flying Windows. We'd love you to be a sponsor. And I haven't gotten a response back. And I, I threw out even a number to them. I was like, how about 75 bucks a week? You know, that seems like, what have they got to lose? I told her our viewership is decent. It's not great. I probably shouldn't have said that. I should have probably not even mentioned like viewership <laughs> yeah. numbers. Um, but seventy-five bucks a week, like, why not give it a shot? Seems reasonable, yeah. And yeah, everyone yeah. could go go buy the uh, that ice cream topping that comes in like a clown's head uh, as yeah. the dispenser. You know I wonder how many of those toppings we'd have to sell in order for them to make their three hundred dollars a month back. Well, I think I think we could get them. Uh, I mean, we could do it, and then like I think the Melendas would probably help out just so that we can get them for one more week. Yeah, the Melinda Army, all yeah. one hundred of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, I was thinking, I was thinking another potential sponsor since I already kind of have a relationship with them. The the good people at Fairlax. I've already true. talked to them on the phone, and I had a great conversation. I had a great rapport, and uh, I could call her back. I have her phone number. 
Yeah. See, they, we'll sponsor a ferret laxative. Yeah. <laughs> uh well look forward to i hope mr sprinkles writes back i mean it seems like uh i don't know they seem like pretty big deal to me it, it seems like it'd be, it'd be just a perfect like it's a slam dunk it's mr sprinkles presents this week in flying windows and you know, yeah. see the image and then yeah those sprinkles were pretty good too i tried them i'm glad you said they were still around because otherwise i would have eaten long expired sprinkles did we lose joe uh yeah you, you crinkled up there for a second but i'm back Okay, um, so let's get into uh, viewer requests. This is That It A Done. That's it, That It A Done, right there. Uh, all right, I just got an email just a little while ago from Nick Grote, who's one of the Melinda mixers. And he said, can I make a viewer request of TikTok, let's talk about time, featuring that clown, rabbit, and dog, please. And I just love it when requests like this come in and for videos that I haven't seen in a really long time. Yeah, uh, people, so people sometimes will say, like, you, they, they play the same videos too much. That's what it's like in our real life. I mean, we will, at any chance, somebody, if somebody, you know, in the pre-quarantine days, if somebody was coming over, you'd be like, oh, have you seen this video? We've seen it a million times. We like to say about that? Oh, of course, yeah. They're like, oh, they always play the same videos. But uh, we're shameless. I think the more yeah. you watch these, the more you appreciate them. So oh, yeah. uh, Nick Grote, that it had done. And I guess we'll be quiet for this one because he might sample it and then make a remix. Let's just, yeah, let's play it safe. Let's just be quiet for this okay. one. Okay. Tick tock, tick tock, talk about time. I've learned to tell the time and I'm just fine. And now that we can do it, we're all feeling fine. Now that we can do it, we're all feeling fine. Tick tock, tick tock, all about time. I've learned to tell the time, and you know I'm just fine. about time and now that we can do it we're all feeling fine bye 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 see you later see you sometime soon we will talk tick tock let's talk again bye bye Really hard not to talk during that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how he's going to sample that. That's just a cacophony there. Yeah, it it's is just a cacophony of sound. Can you bring it back up and just like I want to see the clown? Because tell me, tell me if I'm wrong. Does he look like? Does this look like Drew Carey dressed up as a clown? Is it just me? I, I swear I thought that exact same thing. Did you really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, this is the first time I noticed the uh, three travel clocks <laughs> on the front. Yeah, different size see, travel clocks. The budget is amazing. <laughs> To the critics who say we play videos too much, that's the reason we, why we play. Is George just noticed three clocks at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, they're like the $5 travel clock that you used to see at like, a, I don't know, at the checkout counter at like a Kmart or something. Yeah, yeah. Some poor PA had to run down and probably buy that for the, for the shoot. I or just maybe noticed, that, home. I noticed that this is the for, for the first time that they rhyme time with time. Here. Um, so See, that's I mean, why we play them over and over and over again. This is a thorough examination here. We're, we're not just like glossing over these videos. So that's why you come and watch this this show every Ex single week. Exactly. Um, so Erin wrote us and she asked, "Could I please request bloopers or blooper adjacent videos? Weird or whatever. Love the wedding tape trading class. The the wedding quote the wedding tape trading classic. So anything like that." Oh, this is another great request. Yeah, and she's probably right. We probably haven't played bloopers in a long time. And, and uh, we, I got that email, or we got that email earlier this week. And I was like, oh, we got to call up Danny the Flub Man Opsel. That's our uh, buddy uh, who was the uh, former director at Tonight Show. Now he's a, uh, just a regular old director. Uh, I met him at the Tonight Show. And uh, we'll, we'll give him the whole story. But he's a collector of flubs. And Aaron, this is for you. 
This is to fulfill a that it had done for your blooper request. Uh, here is our interview in thorough examination of all things flub. Come on, let's see your raviolis. Show us 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 your raviolis. It's Danny the Flub Man Opsil. I agree. Yes. I want to eventually just call you the Flub Man. Or, <laughs> or you said earlier, you said earlier a Flub Hound. What do you prefer? You know, I might go with Flub Hound because I kind of, yeah. I'm sniffing out the flubs. It feels yeah. like maybe apt. Totally. Yeah. So, so here's how here's how Danny became. I don't I don't know how you became the flub hound, but here's how I knew about you being a flub hound. Is you were working at the Tonight Show with my wife Albertina, and I was sitting there in the office, and you're like, "Hey, man, you like flubs?" And I was like, "I'm a human being. <laughs> of course I do." And uh, so you showed me this folder on your computer full of flubs, and they were all gold. <laughs> and uh, I think that's what we really first bonded over was our love of flubs. And Absolutely. so we've been wanting to have you on for the last like two and a half years uh, to, to show us some of your best flubs. So I think this will be a reoccurring segment. We'll have you on every couple of months to show us the latest flubs. I would love that. How did you get started in flubbing? Well, there were a couple of sort of flub origin things. I think, I think we've talked about this, Joe, but like there was, there was I think the very first time I really appreciated a love for flubs was this it was a it was a live flub I usually kind of focus on like video based flubs this was a live flub that happened to me when I was about nine years old on a family trip with my family I think we were in northern Iowa from Iowa originally and we went to this restaurant uh northern Iowa and we're all kind of like looking at the menus this uh kind of older lady waitress comes up she's asked you know our, our order we're kind of looking through I remember my older brother Greg was kind of like I and the fried chicken and he kind of looks here and he's like oh the fried chicken and he asked the waitress he just wanted to see like the crispiness level of uh the fried chicken he's about to potentially order and he asked the waitress uh uh this fried chicken uh is it crispy and she kind of looked down and kind of went it's kind of crispy and then it kind of moved on didn't didn't uh reference it you know we all like immediately started like stifling laughter I think I eventually just had to like run to the bathroom just to like get all the giggles out. But it was kind of a perfect mispronunciation of the word crispy, but also the fact that like she, she didn't care at all. Like it wasn't like she was like, oh, excuse me, I said the wrong word or I said that wrong. It was just like she didn't care. Oh, just, yeah. I, I'm very self conscious with my flubs. If I ever flub, I always immediately like correct myself and maybe even apologize. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's bold to just keep moving on and pretend it didn't happen. And that's why it's rare. And that's kind of what started, like, I, I like flubs of all kinds, but there, there are like several different kind of nuanced versions of flubs. And those are the best ones when you don't stop yourself, you don't laugh about it. It's just like, usually it's in some kind of high pressure situation, like an award show, a live event, a newscast, where it's like, you kind of have to plow through. And those are when you find the best yeah well i, I want to get into a video but first before that uh last uh february i was on a motorcycle ride uh with a friend of mine and we went to a restaurant and on the menu was this and i sent this to you immediately uh buffalo chicken salad ten dollars fifty cents cripsy chicken <laughs> tossed in buffalo sauce and i saw that and i was like oh i gotta send this to dan yeah. i gotta send this to the flub hound so <laughs> So yeah, anyway, what do, what do you got first for us? Okay, all right, so first of all, this was extremely hard. I had to go through my whole flub folder and there's, pro there's at least a few dozen that I like really considered, but I know you only wanted three or four, so I really had to narrow it down. But I picked this first one, because there are, like I said, there's a bunch of different categories and unfortunately there's actually quite a few that are probably technically kind of off limits, with maybe someday all unleash, but it's like, there are a few, again, like worked at Fallon show. There's some pretty good, juicy, like rehearsal clips oh. that I have in the archives that I maybe someday can show. I don't know. That's I'm licking my chops right now. <laughs> Tantalizing. And the other great ones are uh, uh, auditions. Because I'm a director, so I do a lot of like auditions, I get a lot of like links, and do like live auditions. And like it's such a high pressure situation there that you get a lot of really juicy flubs. <laughs> I'm not really sure morally if I'm supposed to show this, but boy. <laughs> <laughs> you 
juicy ones. Juicy flubs. That's the name of the segment. Juicy flubs. <laughs> Cripsy <laughs> flubs. So aside from those, then there's also like like the late night world is pretty solid. Um, newscasts are really good. Award shows, any kind of live events, political um, debates are really good. Just like high pressure live situations where you kind of just can't stop and giggle about the word you flub. You got to plow through. And I've sort of found that Stephen Colbert is one of the best flubbers in this way, where I watch a lot of his monologues, and if he flubs, he doesn't reference it, he doesn't laugh about it, he just plows through. Maybe he doesn't even notice it at this point, but uh, there's quite a few good ones on my phone, and you know they're all kind of in the same category. This just represents sort of just like what I would consider a classic run-of-the-mill, traditional sort of flub. Okay, Good way yeah, to get start. started. Yeah. 101. This is 101, flub 101. Classic stuff. So, all right. So, I'll share the screen here. Now, again, this is, he's talking about the, uh, the infamous Access Hollywood uh, Billy Bush bus tape. He's talking Big about story. Billy Bush bus tape. Huge story. He's referring to it. And so, he's talking about this Billy Bush bus tape. And <laughs> we talked with Bill for that. Denying that that was his voice? On the Access Hollywood, you know, Billy Bush Bush tape. <laughs> oh, that's. No, you gotta play back again. Let me you play that. Back. We, we gotta hear these flubs like twice. Yeah, because this is this is a traffic trap like a. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> oh no. Okay. You said a traffic. <laughs> okay, yes, you had a flub. <laughs> the flub hound is not immune to his own flub. <laughs> May not be the first time. May not be the last time. So okay, so. He was saying, this is, again, you know, a lot of these are subtle, and that's kind of what makes them good. So this one's a subtle one. Simple transposition of uh, Billy Bush bus tape. So you got to listen carefully, but he's trying to say, <laughs> Access Hollywood, Billy Bush bus tape. Denying that that was his voice on the Access Hollywood, you know, Billy Bush bus tape. <laughs> <laughs> so when, it, so when, when something like that happens, do you immediately go back and then record it or, or like when you see a flub like you want it you want to own it yes yeah, so it, so that's essentially what happens immediately is when i see it if i'm watching on tv maybe on an ipad or something i'll immediately take out my phone and i'll record the screen this was a rare one where actually i wanted to have it a little bit cleaner because i had it on my phone and it was a really bad recording of my phone so i went and i found it on youtube so I could <laughs> <laughs> you go the extra mile you what? go the extra mile. You want to preserve it the way that it's meant to be preserved. Flubs are important to me. Yeah. <laughs> You're a flub archivist. <laughs> Joe, do you have an example that you, you could show as like a one-on-one? Yeah, uh, I'll, sh yeah, I'll show you uh, one of our favorites. Now, this is a, this is a subtle flub here. I'm going to start off with – no, let, I'm not going to start off with a subtle, subtle flub. I'm going to start off with a classic flub. Um, this one is on a sweepstakes video. It's a video on how to win sweepstakes – which it's, it's all bullshit. Like there's no way you can actually win sweepstakes. Um, and they interview one guy in here who <laughs> claims that he's really good at sweepstakes. There's so many great things in this actual video clip. So I'm just gonna let the whole video clip play, but right up top, there's a great flub by him. And then, uh, but continue to pay attention after the flub because there's a lot of other great things that he says here. So this is on the uh, how to win sweepstakes video. Hi, I'm Patrick Van Horn. Come along with me now as we discover the secrets of winning sweepstakes. I like to take risks, risks, and um, <laughs> so that was also sweepstakes enthusiast. <laughs> so he said, "I like to take risks, risks." <laughs> what do you think they'd let him do a second take? I'm going to turn up the volume a little bit so you can really yeah. hear the, the risks and risks. Okay, here we go. I like to take risks, risks, and um, I like to do things of chance, and I like to think that something good will come in the future. I have a, a very good skill with it, and I have kind of a knack about doing it, so I want to put that skill to use, and hopefully I'll win some very valuable prizes in the near future. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. But he's talking about how good he is at sweepstakes, and then he's talking about how he's just very good at sweepstakes. He doesn't say why he's good at sweepstakes. He just keeps saying, I'm very good at it, and I just I want to put that to use. Um, do you want to hear Rick's risk? Well, look, he, he's the seventh person who got one car at the, in New York State. So <laughs> One car, seven. He's doing all right for himself. One more time. I like to take risks, risks, 
<laughs> and um, there we go. <laughs> he is a representative of a classic kind of like post flub moment. Like as soon as he says it, he realizes the mistake, and there's like these tiny little moments. In this case, his eyes dart to the side for a very brief like. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, you, oh yeah. The body language to read the body language of post flub. Somebody oh, yeah. like Stephen Colbert, though, he just keeps plowing through. Exactly. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that look. There's right? so much experience in the flub, but uh, everyone has their own style. But yeah. This, he, and again, he, did, he, he plowed through, but that there is that brief moment of like, oh, I said it wrong, but I have to move on. <laughs> yeah. One car seven isn't a broadcaster, so it's going to take him a little bit to recover. And Dang. also, Dan, 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 you're a director. What, if you were directing that sweepstakes, uh, how to win at the sweepstakes video, and hopefully you get a chance sometime in your career to direct that show, yeah. um, wouldn't you just tell the guy, like, let's do that again, let's get that clean so you can say risks, risks instead of ricks? Well, here's, here's what I would say. As a director, I would say let's do another take. As a flub hound, I would say we're, we're fine, moving on. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's like two sides of you, you know, it's the yin and yang. You got to juggle that on the set. Um, well, I, I've got one for a video called The Modern Goat, um, which I think is, is, uh, tells you everything you need to know about the video. It's about owning goats. And the host right away gives a disclaimer that he might be flubbing throughout the video and then proceeds to flub. And uh, this is one we quote a lot. So there's a little bit of preamble. Um, and then you'll hear the flub. We can. Uh, I think I repeated the flub as well. How's the volume? Good. My name's Randy Atkins, producer of this video, The Modern Goat. I'm not some fancy pants actor. I'm a real person. And guerrilla video means real people on both sides of the camera. As such, I'll stutter from time to time, trip over a few of my words, and, and not be as smooth as some of the polished acts or actors you see on TV. The Nubian, Son, and Togberg are all really good milkers, and the Lamanches are becoming popular, very popular. And the Lamanches are becoming popular, very popular, popular, very popular, popular, very popular, popular, very popular. All right. Oh. So yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's a little bit of. Uh, I like that we the edited that too. Yeah, to like really drive home the flub. Popular. Like we, yeah. <laughs> Dang, that's a good technique. And he stops himself. He kind of says, "Are becoming very prop popular." So he doesn't even finish saying "popular." He, it was, he could it was a vocal vocal version of the eye dart from the uh, Rick's guy. Right. Yeah. It, he could have easily redone that because it looks like he's a one man operation. You know, he could have easily redone that, but he's like, "No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. That was fine. I, I, already, I already put out my disclaimer saying there's gonna be some <laughs> some clubs here." If he like uh, messed up enough making the video that he was like, you know, what, I'm just gonna shoot a disclaimer put it <laughs> probably yeah Smart. he shot the intro at the end i bet um so dan we've got a question for you nick brought up a we, we were having a discussion about this this morning and uh nick you brought up a question about what's the difference between a flub and a blooper do we want to address that now i mean i feel like yeah. now's as good a time as any i think it's a perfect time yeah. uh, no i think it's a really actually important clarification and that kind of pinpoints what we've talked about a little bit before i would say i mean think about a blooper like where do you see a blooper on like a dvd of a of a movie or something it's all the kind of outtakes mess ups everyone's having a good time everyone's giggling i think that's the big distinction is a blooper is you're in a situation like a movie set where you know you could do a hundred takes we can keep you know i messed up ha 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 let's laugh about it but we're going to do another take everything's going to be fine and with the flub it's more of like a tense situation because it's you're not laughing about it you got to plow through it's a live show it's an awards show it's a political debate i can't screw this up i flubbed uh oh I, I just got to move on not worry about it there's no time for laughter i think that's the big distinction a blooper you laugh a flub you plow through <laughs> interesting wow. yeah great answer wow that's really thoughtful yeah no flubs are high pressure situation anybody can do a blooper but a flub well anybody can do a flub too but flubs are Flubs are more painful, right? I'm, yeah, but I would say more enjoyable because, and I even think people that are, that are flubbing, I think they're laughing on the inside, but because they're always funny. I mean, any kind of like a little human <laughs> funny. Yeah. And especially when it's happening to you, but I think when you're in a situation, it's just like the same reason like you, you, know, you get the giggles at church because you're, you're trying to stifle a laughter, a 
laugh that like, you know, you're in a situation where you can't. And in that situation, you're like, oh, I just flubbed. I kind of want to laugh, but I can't. I need to plow through this a live show. Oh, they're beautiful. Flubs are beautiful. They are. Do you have another one you want to uh, queue up for us? I do. Okay, so here, as we're talking about uh, awards shows, here's one from a recent award show. I think it was the Oscars last year. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about maybe what, where this maybe came from. But it's, again, sort of a classic. You know, I'm always, I'm especially keen eye, keen ear on award shows. Oscar night, Grammys night, Emmys night, Golden Globes. I'm all over those they're shows. They're always live, right? Because they're always live. They're always live. And yeah. it's like, you know, high pressure and people are, you know, usually the celebrities are kind of reading something for the first time. They haven't really rehearsed it in their heads. So some, some good stuff. So here's one. This is Amy Adams from, I think, the Oscars last year. Uh, and talking about, uh, I think, best adapted screenplay. Uh, but uh, here it comes. <laughs> All right. Here. This year's nominees for best adapted screenplay have brought their source material brilliantly to life. Ooh, subtle. Mm -hmm. I like it. Have brought their source material brilliantly to life. See what you see, what's happening here. Her, she's saying source material while her mind is thinking brilliantly. So what ends up coming out is material. And you could almost hear her yelling at herself inside of her own brain after she says material. You can, you can almost see that like anger of just like, you fucked it up. Exactly. And everybody saw it. Yeah. yeah it's, going back. it's a live show. It's already in millions of homes. And now it's in a million more with our show. So. <laughs> yep, we got a million viewers. <laughs> uh, oh, great flub. What do you want to do next year? I, we've got so many flubs to get to, but. Uh, well, I, I want to show uh, Iberow. Oh, okay. And I think I've yeah. shown this before, and maybe I've sent this to you before, Dan. I usually send, whenever there's a new flub, I usually send it to you, but uh, it's been a couple of years since I think you've seen this one. So uh, this one comes out uh, from a self defense video by Mark Animal McYoung. Is that his yeah. name, Nick? Yeah. Mark Animal McYoung, and it's very homemade, and he's inside this like big green tarp teaching you how to defend yourself with a knife and this is uh he, he's talking about well uh, you, you'll see what he's talking about but listen to the the way he says eyebrow it's a uh, I, I just love it it's, it's how i say eyebrow from now on so uh anytime now, you refer to eyebrows yeah all right so listen listen closely i'm gonna turn it up just a little bit I'll give it a second There we go. I would be covered from eyebrow to foot in blood and urine and feces. Okay. Feces. One feces. more time. And feces. Oh. <laughs> I would be covered from eyebrow to foot in blood and urine and feces. All right, one, one more time just to. I would be covered from eyebrow to foot in blood and urine and feces. Okay, so what, what do you think's going on there, Dan? <laughs> what do you think's going on with Mark Animal McYoung? Well, well, first of all, this is a very rare one in which generally a good flub just comes in kind of any old run-of-the-mill sentence. I mean, this is a pretty spectacular <laughs> where, like, I have a The flub is almost the least interesting word in that whole sentence. I want to know why <laughs> blood and feces. Uh, he adds like a syllable in there. I think that's the adds a syllable to eyebrow. 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 Like yeah, yeah. I think there's three syllables. Like now. It, has to, it has to be coming from the fact that he's like exhausted. I mean, he's out of breath. He's like in the process of trying to gasp and catch his breath and say eyebrow. Yes, yes. Exhausted yeah. flubs. I bet those. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine after like running the mile in school, you probably weren't talking that clearly. Or, or what about like after a football game, like Monday Night Football? They, they, you know, they interview the quarterback afterwards. They, they, they're exhausted. There's probably a ton of flubs then. When I went for the touchdown, <laughs> I can't talk. I got sweat all over my eyebrows. <laughs> uh, so I, I wanted, I wanted to take it just, uh, just let's just uh, stop. Let's put uh, flubs on hold just for a second because. You are the person who gave us the uh, Iowa Duskin couch, the uh, Patricia Scoggins, uh, I think it's public access or maybe it's like your college 
yeah show we 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 featured in our volume nine dvd last year and uh it's already a classic so uh yeah i I brought that video so you could talk about that but maybe just set it up first oh sure so this was uh yeah so i produced this uh show for the university of iowa university of iowa tv um and we would just kind of get local guests from around town local musicians or comedians or whoever we could kind of get that were just interesting and like I had this idea of getting a local psychic and just thought like this could be a really fun kind of cool high energy bit you know we get a psychic in and uh maybe read the fortune of our of our host and there aren't as many psychics in Iowa City as you might think so there's just kind of slim pickings but I found this woman kind of the name alone sort of sold me Patricia Scoggins and just called her out of the phone book and we had like an hour-long conversation um, cause she talked sort of slowly, but, uh, and, you know, kind of explained what the bit was and she agreed and I really didn't know what to expect, but, um, uh, she came on and I mean, I guess I could leave it at that. If you're yeah. Gonna- yeah. All right. So here it is. And, and she mentions her phone number in here and I just, I edited that part out. So that part will sound weird. Uh, but yeah, she mentions her phone number and I, I took that out. So, uh, here's uh, Patricia Scoggins on Iowa desk and couch. I'm here with Trisha from Tarot and Astrology, and she's been so kind as to come in and give us a reading, a tarot reading. And um, so let's, let's get right to it. What exactly is tarot, and how do you use it to predict one's future and all that jazz? It's uh, a lot of people are real psychic with it. I don't consider myself psychic. I consider myself very intuitive. A lot of people say I'm psychic, but... Um, that's a big honor. I um, would you like to would you like to get to it? Yeah, and avert the negative pattern. So I'm like a caged animal that needs to be set free to run wild, kind of. Could be. All right. Well, well, I, I want to I want to back up here just so we can uh, appreciate your dir- you're directing this. Are you the director yes. on this? Yeah, yeah. So look at that direction right there during that long pause. I mean, you you are destined to become a director. I mean, like look at this. The, watch it. Kind of. Two shot. <laughs> look at that direction. Back to Patricia. <laughs> Could be. All right. Well, thank you very much, <laughs> Trisha, for coming in, and uh, we appreciate everything you've done. You can call me at 319. I live at Muscatine Avenue, apartment number one. It's right across the street from Walgreens. Well, thank you again for coming in. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Blessed be. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to have this opportunity. You struck gold with that guest, Dan. Yeah, I kind of prefer to think that she just has a three number phone number. <laughs> just call 319 and she'll answer. <laughs> oh, but, but so were you sweating bullets at first, like when the, during that awkward moment, or were you enjoying the whole thing? Yeah, no, so it was, I mean, I, it was very nerve wracking because it was kind of like, you know, we, I was being given this opportunity to direct this show and like I wanted all the segments to go really well. So it was like, at the time I was really nervous because I was, you know, the interview was like 15 minutes long and it was supposed to be like three or four. And I knew that we just like had to get to this card reading and it was like taking forever just to, you know, get a few sentences out. So I was just freaking out. Like, how do I make this more interesting? Which is probably why I did that cutaway to the host. <laughs> and it's like, she's not saying anything. Just cut to the host. I don't know. <laughs> what? Was the host angry at you or is he angry at you for like bringing her on or did, I mean, he rolled with the punches pretty well, it seemed like. He did pretty well. Yeah. He, I mean, he was definitely uncomfortable and it was like, it's not in front of any kind of like audience or anything. It's, it's literally, it's, it's him and then the camera operator, we had three camera operators. So it's just this deathly quiet studio with like three other people <laughs> like feeling awkward and not wanting to move or talk with this dead silence the whole time. Oh, thank God well, that you made that call to uh, bring on Patricia and directed it so well. I mean, oh, and thanks for taping it and then sending it to us because we gave it a good home. Uh, absolutely, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, but also, I remember I followed up with an email 
I think that either you had told me or I, I can't remember who found it, but uh, Patricia's Facebook page. And you sent me this, uh, a post that she had put up. It says, uh, oops, there's a flub. Uh, my <laughs> oven went out last night, so I think I'm getting a new one. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> fans. Yeah, and then, uh, then I was looking at her page, and then I showed you this, this exchange. She, she did another post, and then somebody responded to it, and it says, anyone want to help me move, be at my house early Monday morning? And David <laughs> Patterson said, too far from here. <laughs> There's a modern technology, Greg, because you can communicate. <laughs> it's all about communication. Um, yeah, and usually so. people are just like really excited to help you move and just just put a post up and then like be at my house <laughs> early Monday morning. Everybody knows it's on uh, whatever avenue across from the Walgreens. So show up. <laughs> She's just more than happy to give out her address to anybody. She even like when she was giving out her address, she was even giving out the apartment number. Like you could like go and knock on her front door. Like, uh, <laughs> it was a different time. Hey, I want to get you back to flubs. I want to tell a quick flub story. There are two um, legendary flubs um, in my family. One stems from when I was a kid. And this is the, you know, we play VHS tapes. We have fun at them. We poke fun at them. And we can dish it out, but we can't take it. And I have a tape that I haven't shown to anybody in middle school. And in fact, I destroyed what I thought was the only copy. Joseph have I seen it? Yeah, yeah. This is the parents just don't understand oh, yeah. music video I made for the uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince song. Parents just don't understand. I, we were at um, Disney. You could go in, put on comedy props and record it and then make your own music video. So you're, they're giving you the lyric sheet for parents just don't understand during the recording. And they don't have Will Smith's lyric sheet. So they're just doing it. They're just transcribing it, whatever. So there's a lot of flubs in the in the lyrics themselves but you're just reading it along on a paper sheet and so i remember when i was reading it there's a part where he goes and put away those double knit reversible slacks and uh, because i think his grandma wanted him to wear double knit reversible slacks and my mouth was getting dry at that point so i said now put away those double mint double mint reversible flax And you only get one take. So then I had to go in and my sister came in to play my love interest in the music video for some reason. That was the creative decision. And and so I have to lip sync to myself saying double mint reversible flax. And then it just kind of sits there because there's no lyric after that. So you can you can hear my voice that I know I've screwed up in the echo and just the silence after that. And uh, so, yeah, I had to hear my own flub while recording that. And that was probably, again, maybe one of the least embarrassing parts of that video. My voice hadn't changed yet, and it was higher than my sister's. But um, Oh, that video is a classic. I haven't seen it in probably 25 years. It's somewhere. Nick smashed it with a hammer. And, uh, but, but legend has it there is a second copy out there somewhere. So we're still looking for the, it. The other one is so when my dad is on vacation, <clears throat> he's legendary for making flubs because his brain is just turned off. So um, there's one time we all go up to this cabin up north in Wisconsin every, for a week every year. And uh, we went to a, a restaurant called The Wheelhouse, which has pizza toppings. And about half the, you know, trying to figure out who wants what, half, half this. And somebody wanted um, sausages and somebody wanted, um, uh, what mushrooms. was it? Mushrooms, yeah. Somebody wanted mushrooms, somebody wanted, uh, so he's like, okay, we got half mushrooms half a uh, sausage, whatever. And so he goes, all right. So he's talking to the waitress. He goes, so we'll have one pizza with uh, nothing on it, but mustaches. <laughs> and <laughs> mustaches, I mean, we let my dad have it. And that was probably 25 years ago. And now we call that same restaurant, we call it Mustaches Family Restaurant. <laughs> we reenact it every year. We're like, uh, how many mustaches did you want? I, you know, or I, I'm, I'm full. I can't do another mustache. But it's always funny whenever I would go up to visit, you guys would always just call it that very seriously. You'd be like, well, I was thinking we'd go to Mustaches tonight. Yeah, still, <laughs> still call it that. And then I think a year later, we were, um, he, he was making sandwiches from, coal, from uh, leftover uh, turkey and leftover chicken. And so he says, uh, all right, we've got cold cuts here. Who wants turkin? And uh, <laughs> so, dad's a flood master. Yeah, especially on vacation. So now yeah. we say... Uh, now we say Turkin, and even at Mustard's Family Restaurant, we're like, do you want Mustard's or do you want Turkin on this? Maybe we'll go half Mustard's, half Turkin. 
And so those flubs have continued to be legends in my family. For me, a, a lot of our, flub, our family flubs and friend flubs come from the game Catchphrase because it is a perfect storm of, of you, you're on a time limit, you're on the, everybody's looking at you, you have to communicate, it's, words are so important. High pressure. High pressure situation, it's ripe for flubs. So we were playing Catchphrase maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago or so, and my buddy Tom, whose house I'm at right now, I'm in his basement right now in Wisconsin, he uh, had the word trumpet player or something like that. And he's trying to say Dizzy Gillespie. He's trying to say Dizzy Gillespie. And then we would all say, oh, trumpet player. And, uh, but he kept saying Dizzy Giuseppe. And he couldn't get past. He kept saying Dizzy Giuseppe. And we're like, we knew what he was talking about. But we're like, who? And he's like, and you could just see his gears turning too. He's like, Dizzy Giuseppe. Dizzy Giuseppe. And even now, just out of the blue, I'll still ask him. I'll be like, what's that trumpet player's name? And you can just see the gears turning. Dizzy. And now he can say it. But, oh, man, tears. Just tears. Oh, it's the best. Flubs are the best. They are the best. And that reminded me, I mean, I think going in hand with uh, uh, mustaches and then the Cripsy Chicken, it does seem like restaurants are a good one because I just thought of this one, which has become a legendary one about 20 years ago that my wife told me, and we still talk about almost on a daily basis to this day, is uh, her dad, Dirk, uh, lives in Iowa. They were at a restaurant, maybe TGI Fridays, I think. And he's kind of like looking through like the, you know, some Mexican dishes, considering like the tacos and uh, burritos and the waitress was there. And he turned to her and said like, how do you make the uh, Charlie Changa? <laughs> I don't know how I got Charlie, but trying to say chimichanga. <laughs> Did he power through or did he stop himself and, and reset and no, reset? I think he maybe just thought that's how it was pronounced. But <laughs> Charlie Changa. Charlie Changa. Oh, so good. Um, all right. Uh, what do you think? Nick, you want to show your, you have one more flub left to show us, right, Dan? Yeah. Right. Okay. One more. Why don't we end on that one? Nick, you, do you have one more? Yeah, I do. And this one comes from this might be the ultimate. I mean, there's so many flubs in this video that when I was watching this for an unrelated reason about two years ago, I just wrote flubs on a post-it and put it on there. And it's because the guy doing the VO, again, didn't take the time to like re-record it. He just went with it. And it's a video about how to do tricks while being a bartender. It's called the flip side of bartending. And I put them all in a row and then I put saved my favorite at the end and replayed that several times. But I can go back to any of these if we want to dive deeper. So. Right. Filled with flubs. The first part of the part of this move, you're going to see the half spin. What you want to do is hold a glass in your left hand. In your left hand, excuse me. Anytime you do flip a bottle to the to a glass that still has liquid in it, it's a very simple trick with, that's, that you use drink straws to perform. Now, as you can see, you've created the illusion, the illusion that the bottle flipped over the shoulder. Bet the customer a dollar that they cannot pull the, the dollar out from underneath the bottle. Do not try this with full bottles. We will explain, explain the rule of thumb for flipping in a section coming up. We will explain, 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 explain. Remember that if you can do a trick at least 10 times in practice, then you are ready to perform it for customers. Now keep on flipping. All right, so explaining was my favorite one there. Go, wait, wait, keep it up. Go back to us. Uh, Draw tricks or something like someone with yeah this one this yeah straw, yeah that was that was my favorite. In it. It's a very simple trick with that you that you use drink straws to perform. Drink <laughs> now, straws. As you can see. <laughs> I also this one's subtle, but he says you can do this. Uh, you can do this with your left hand, but he says you can do this with your left handed. <laughs> wow. It's very subtle. It took me a few plays back, but he corrects himself. What you want to do is hold a glass in your left hand. In your left hand, excuse me. Anytime you do hold this with your left handed, with your left hand, excuse me. You can barely hear it, but it was enough for him to want to do it, do it over. What you want to yeah, do I is got, hold a glass yeah, in your I left have... hand. In your left hand, excuse me. Dan, I have a question for you. A flip related question for you. Mm -hmm. um, he, he he threw in the excuse me in there. What do you think about that? <laughs> well, I'm wondering. I'm, I feel like he's. They must have been shooting on like you know old like physical tape or something. Like that maybe it's just like, you know, they, he can't go back and do a second second take or something. Yeah. Like that, I don't know why else he would not just go back and like restart the line so that he can edit out. Or maybe he just doesn't know how to edit. 
that's actually probably it was probably like a b roll and he just hit, was like talking over it in real time and then it was like i'm not going back <laughs> exactly <laughs> i think about that sometimes with podcasts like listening to a podcast i hear a few flubs in there which could be a whole other segment unto itself oh, yeah uh but because they're so long that sometimes I'm just thinking like, why didn't they fix that? And I'm like, they probably get to the end and like, I don't want to go back and like re-listen to what I just recorded. Oh, uh, no. Um, yeah. So I, I, would, I would love to know. We, yeah, we, we have hundreds of hours of our show recorded. I would just love, I would love to pay somebody. Like if, if we make a bunch of money someday, maybe we'll pay somebody just to go through and get all of our flubs and just put them back to back to back. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. It'd be like the, yeah, the, I don't know. The, the the Great Wall of China. The Great Wall of China of flubs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You you could hear it from space. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's uh, what's the final flub we want to go out on? And keep in mind, this is just this is a to be continued. We've got plenty more flubs. Yes. Um, let me see real quick. Well, actually, kind of in that same sort of category. Real quick, can I throw in one more super quick one? Absolutely. This one. It's from a commercial. So this is a whole. This is kind of another category which we talked a little bit about, but like. This is a finished commercial. There's these flubs that somehow, not in live high pressure situations, but you know, a commercial, it was shot. They didn't do another take. They, they got through edit, they got through approvals. It was finished and it's aired. And somehow it made it through all those approvals and you know, somehow didn't get caught. And so this was a deal dash commercial. And again, it's a subtle one, but just listen carefully. But the whole point of this commercial is all these different deals. It's like, Hey, on Deal Dash, you know, I saved twenty dollars with, you know, I got, you know, I got this ping pong table. It was only eighteen dollars, and it's just a repeat of these over and over and over. So the word dollars is really important and really prominent, and so everyone's pronouncing the D in dollars very prominently. And this one guy has like the softest D of dollars, and it doesn't even really sound like the word dollars. But again, subtle, but it really stuck out. And I, I kept hearing this commercial. I tracked it down, and, and here it is. So it's not the whole commercial, but it just has one of the uh, one of the dollars to set up, and then you'll hear it. So, I can't wait. All right, here it is. Deal-dash.com. I want these Bluetooth headphones for twenty dollars. I got these three suitcases for less than forty dollars. 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 Yeah. Forty dollars. Okay, let me play it again. I want these Bluetooth headphones for twenty dollars. I got these three suitcases for less than forty dollars. <laughs> this is for less than forty dollars. <laughs> he kind of feel, swallows the D. Forty dollars. I feel like when that happens, when you see a flub in a commercial, you got to make a wish. It's like seeing a shooting star. Because how did it? Like you said, how did it get that far? How did it get through all those checks and balances and? That's what that's what is, was so shocking, and I I direct some commercials as well. So like that more than any other process, like any other kind of videos or even like sketches and stuff, commercials like get poured over every frame. It has to be a very certain length, and like you know you do a hundred takes to make sure everything's perfect, and you have all these different options in the edit. So that's what stood out to me is like how did forty dollars make it to <laughs> even, like do the audio mix? It's like hey, can you like take a D from another take or another person and <laughs> it in. dollars is fine. I've got a, a ventriloquism how-to tape and they say that like certain words that are like plosives you can't say while you're keeping your lips shut so you substitute letters and that's what it reminds me of like if you're saying the word basketball you have to say basket doll and so the, the instructor that is going basket doll basket doll but it's kind of halfway between a B and a D that's wow. kind of the way dollars is he kind of makes it a dollars like he kind of swallows it a little bit maybe this guy's a ventriloquist making a little money on the side from that's my that. conspiracy theory yeah all right, now um, all right. one Let, more right one okay. more this this is this is the this is the the best one and you go you went on a journey for this one yeah so this was yeah this is like yeah it was pretty crazy so this was again aside from cripsy chicken this was probably the moment that i really kind of got hooked on the flubs was <laughs> 1999 MTV Movie Awards, which I always kind of watched religiously and was watching that I was in high school and it was the best villain category and Stephen Dorff won the award. And so he uh, goes up on stage and so he won, he beat out Chucky. So he won for Blade, uh, Bride of Chucky was out that year, Chucky was up. And so clearly like he came up, he just said a few like, hey, thanks for everyone that voted for me. And then clearly like the producers asked him to kind of say this other line 
because they had this scheduled cutaway of, uh, of Chucky flipping the bird at him. So he had to say, uh, and Chucky, uh, better luck next time. That was kind of his, his phrase. So he went up there and was supposed to say, Chucky, better luck next time, so that that would trigger them to cut to Chucky. And so I had known this, I had seen this, and I'd like always remember, it's like, oh, this, he flubbed it. I can't believe he said the word wrong, and I'll show you exactly how he did in a minute. But then, well, what do you think? Should I show the clip and then tell the story, or should I finish the story and then uh, show the clip? Uh, I think finish the story. Okay. Cause, so, cause, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so this was kind of became a thing of legend and I sort of like just had it in my back pocket in the back of my mind. It was just sort of a personal thing for me. I didn't really share it with too many people. And then I started talking again. I was like working as a writer at the tonight show talking to uh, my friend, John Haskell, who's a writer there. And I told him this story because he enjoys flubs as well. And so I told him this story about this flub that happened on the 1999 MTV movie awards. He didn't believe me. And I was convinced, like, I got to find this clip. I looked everywhere online on YouTube. There's even a lot of MTV Movie Awards, the entire shows online, except for some reason, 99 did not exist. And I even, like, went to our video researcher at The Tonight Show, had him, like, scour his unique kind of uh, archives of awards shows, which he has almost every single one. He couldn't even track it down. Hmm. So it went on for years. I'm looking for this clip. I just want to find this one club. There was a lot of the specific details of it that I remembered. And I like that John didn't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> there's like, no way he's there's uh, no way he screwed up the introduction to Steven, Chunky. We're talking about Stephen Dorff here. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> and so basically, okay, so what what he said was he was supposed to say better luck next time. And what I remembered so clearly was that he went up there and said, and Chucky, better luck next time. Chucky, better luck next time. And then he even like, again, there's a very split second that, at least in my mind, he like noticed that he said it wrong, better luck next time. And instantly kind of like, you can kind of see him sort of jerk his head. He kind of took this quick peace sign and bolts out of there. And it was like a perfect stew of like this flub. He gets really tense. It even feels like his, his peace sign, his fingers were really spread, really tense in that moment. So all these little details that I've been explaining to John for years. And I think he says it better luck next time. And I'm talking about this thing for years. And one day I'm talking about it again in the writer's room. And Becky Krause, Tonight Show writer, she was pretty new at the time. She overhears the story. And she was like, you know, I just came from a job uh, as a video researcher at Viacom, you know, VH1, MTV, Nick at Night, all those shows. I still have some friends over there. I could maybe see if they could track that down. And I was like more excited than anything in my entire life. <laughs> and so I didn't really think much of it because I was like, you know, I don't know if this will pan out, you know, optimistic, but who knows, skeptical. And it was like a couple days later, she like taps me on the shoulder and is like, I just got an email from my friend. <laughs> I was like, Dorf? And she was like, Dorf. <laughs> she, pulls up, she pulls up this clip. It was exactly like I remembered in any, every way. And I was like, roll, like on the floor rolling. It was like the most giddy I've ever been. Oh, man, what a day. You got you to gotta remember that date and celebrate that date every <laughs> single year. Dorf day. The Dorf yeah, day. Dorf day. <laughs> It's so better luck we, next time day. Better luck next time. So, now we get to see it. Now we get to see it. After all that toil, we get to now watch it. And this is like the only copy anywhere, believe me. I research everywhere. And so it's not perfect video quality because it was just like, you know, they couldn't export anything for probably Viacom reasons, but they took a phone and just video the screen. So the quality's not perfect, but the sound is there. You should be able to see the details. Better luck next time. Do we time. see the finger, the spread out finger and everything? We see all that? <laughs> Watch for those fingers. They're there. Okay. All right. Here it is. I'm nervous. All right. There he is. Thank you very much, uh, Tim TV and everybody that voted for me. Um, Chucky, better luck next time. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. There he is. Uh, one more time. Five Thank more times. Thank you very times. much, uh, Tim TV and everybody that voted for me. Um, Chucky, better luck next time. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so. Better luck next time.
So there's better luck next time. You can kind of see, see, watch his eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> I said that wrong. I think it's especially. I think it's especially hard for actors too, right? I mean, like when they screw it up, because that's supposed to be their trade, right? Exactly. Yeah. Would you ever? Would you, <laughs> there's the fingers, there's the Dan, fingers. would you ever get that as a tattoo? Like, you know what? Oh, you know, I wish I would have remembered. But uh, so, as a gift that Christmas, Becky Krause uh, took a, this exact screen grab you're looking at now, put it on a T-shirt, and gave it to me for. Uh, oh, really? Oh, you have it back that's there. That's great. Oh. Man, is it with the spread apart fingers? It is. It's it's this exact frame right here. Right here. Oh man! <laughs> One more time. One more time. Thank you very much, uh, Tem TV and everybody that voted for me. Um, Chucky, better luck next time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so then, here's the other thing of it. So. I'm convinced because I I remember specifically like watching reruns of this show so that I could see that moment again and see the flub and it was fixed. And that, that, that's where the skepticalness of Haskell came from because I would tell the story and I was like, I would watch reruns and it was fixed. He said, better luck, ne better luck next time. And so he was like, oh, well then you were just hearing things the first time. Well, and like so they, they did an ADR thing? They did an ADR? Well, here's here's what I think they did, because I've worked on some like live shows where in reruns they edit things. I think they took it to the audio mixer and they said, amongst all the other little corrections of the show, they said, "Hey, do you think you can like maybe transpose those two in the audio mix and like see if you can make him say it correctly?" And I think they did that, and that's my theory, and that's why Haskell didn't believe me. And I even did an experiment at one point where I took those two syllables and swapped them just in like <laughs> audio editing program. It worked. Really? So, well, it, do you remember when you watch the reruns? He still does this, and it's the same posture. So it's not like they had him do a retake. No, they didn't do a retake. I really okay. think, yeah, everything else was the same piece and the teeth thing. But it was uh, suddenly the audio was was correct. So, but when you did, ran your test, you grabbed the U out of Nuxt and lifted it out and put it, removed the E out of Lack. And then just swap the two, and exactly. they fell in perfectly. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's still a little bit stuttery because like I'm, you know, I'm not a au professional audio mixer, but it was close enough that I knew that with like another tiny bit more tweaking, this would be perfect. But it was already like you wouldn't even notice it, and probably wow. my 16 year old self watching it wouldn't have noticed even the version that I just did. So that's what happened. Wow. So you're not only a, a flub hound, you're a flub scholar because you went the extra mile of doing the transposing just to see as a control experiment if that's what they could have done. And I think you're right. Yep. And that's, that's what happened. And we, knowing, like, eventually working in that kind of world and seeing it happen, it just reminded me. I was like, oh, yeah, that's what they did. Better luck we, Yeah. And so now we have a, our own sort of holy grail of flubs that we've been trying to track down in um I, th I think it was like 1990 there was um uh, a mother's day special on saturday night live joe may have told you about this where they had all the people's moms on so they had like chris farley's mom and and they, and they kind of had them do little skits with them and uh they had dana carvey's mom on and he was in the bit as i remember it he was saying come on, mom, I really want you to play to, to be George W. Bush like I, or George Bush like I am, you know? And she was supposed to say, not going to do it. Like his catchphrase is George Bush, not going to do it. But instead, she's, and again, I'm not saying this is her fault. She's not a, an actor, probably didn't want to do this. She goes, not going to do it. <laughs> and I had this on tape. I tape for, I was a big SNL fan. I taped the SNL Mother's Day special. And I remember watching it with Joe and like, and then that just became a thing we quoted. Like if we didn't want to do something, we say, not going to do it. I still quote that to this day. Not going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but they, Saturday Night Live is notoriously pretty protective of getting their clips out there. And I know there's music licensing things that they can't put out there on the internet. So there's no record of this Mother's Day special anywhere online that I well, can find. Well, Dan, I told you about the story and then you put me in touch with Arthur Meyer who, and Arthur, he knows, he knows everything about Saturday Night Live, but he didn't yeah. know this episode because they never ran it in reruns, he was saying. Like, he didn't think that he had actually seen this because it only aired 
on that one Saturday night. They never <laughs> put it up in reruns. Yeah, so he, he couldn't find it. And then he went looking for it because he was at NBC at the time, and he asked their archivist, but they, they didn't have it. So I think, I think this one, this is the next journey right here. Not going to do it is... Uh, Oh my God. Yeah, I got to look through my tapes because maybe I still have it on a compilation of like Simpsons and other stuff, but I, I don't know. Jeez. Somewhere out there. Well, keep, keep hope alive because it took me years, but I got there. Yeah. Over, over a decade. Yeah. The thing is, John Haskell doesn't believe us either. So um, <laughs> he's just a really skeptical person. <laughs> um, speaking of John, you guys do uh, some, you guys have like the funniest YouTube channel ever. We've had Haskell on the show before and we've shown some of your, your videos on there. And, uh, but uh, yeah, why don't you talk about your uh, YouTube page and your fun stuff that you do? Oh, it's, uh, well, it's, uh, yeah, on YouTube, we're just called Real Big Boys. So I guess probably YouTube slash Real Big Boys, but it's, uh, it just started when we were we were both writers at The Tonight Show and we would just kind of get together on the weekends and just kind of shoot little videos, just the two of us, and like film each other. So it really was no like crew and really no like thought to them, just kind of video experiments that we'd just make. Yeah. Um, and started probably like over five, maybe six years ago. And I mean, it's just kind of a dumping ground for just like weird kind of- Yeah, yeah. But, but also your, uh, your Instagram, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, just, yeah, just that. It's kind of, it's, it's sometimes, well, the funny thing is like we spend a long time like shooting and editing like these little videos and do like weird visual effects, after effects kind of thing, turning our faces upside down and popping our heads off and like spend all this time making these videos and they'll maybe get a few thousand views if we're lucky. And then we did this one, uh, baboon week where we took like Getty image, uh, videos of baboons and monkeys and revoiced them. And they'd get like a million, two million views. I was so. going to bring up Baboon Week, actually. I was that, That's what I was just about to bring up was Baboon Week. Just go uh, show you, put in less effort in things and <laughs> you'll <yeah>. be rewarded. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Thanks um, for coming on this uh, extra cripsy episode of VCR Party. I'd and like to thank you from uh, my foot to my eyebrow uh, <laughs> for coming on. And uh, of course... Uh, Better luck next time. Blast. Appreciate it. Yeah. Let's do it again. We'll have the flood pound back on in, in a couple months with all new flubs. Sounds good. Thanks, Dan. Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. Come on. Let's see your raviolis. Show us 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 your raviolis. What a nice guy. Great guy, a He's scholar. He's a flood master. A flood, a flood master. master. Yeah. Yes. Hey, just uh, while uh, that was going on, I there's two more updates about whether we watched Major Dad as a family growing up. I thought people would be interested to hear. <laughs> so my dad said never, and then my sister said yes, we did! Exclamation point. And then my dad said, mm, nope. So this has stirred up some controversy this, amongst Nick, my family. I feel like this is you're capturing the Freedmans here. Yeah, it really is. There's some, <laughs> we're going to some dark places here, and who knows where, where this will lead. Nick, I'm thinking about doing a documentary about <laughs> yeah? your family right now. Yes. Absolutely. I'll give you unfettered access. It, <laughs> and I have a lot of home incriminating home movies of me doing uh, re giving cats tickets away, things like that. We've seen them all, yeah. yeah. So well, can you sign away all your family's life rights? Absolutely, and I don't Excellent. care how my family is painted in this at all. I just want <laughs> are you able to, to be made. Are you able to sign away Gerald McCraney's life rights? Yeah, I, I'll I'll vouch for him. Yeah. Whatever it takes. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, uh, George, Steve, we're on it. We got a documentary. <laughs> Love it. Better the doc. <laughs> <laughs> Here's nice things. This is the segment of the show where we show off some nice things. I've got some good ones uh, this week. What do you have, Joe? I have three photos that, that uh, some Melinda's have sent me, and uh, I laughed out loud at all of them. Um, here's a, so Bob sent this one. Bob uh, Hedges, he's a frequent contributor. He said he was at a uh, vacuum repair shop. And you know how they have now, like, clean pens – uh, cup, and then when you're done signing, you put it into the dirty pens cup, and then they sanitize yeah. it and switch it around. He found a dirty pens cup, and it looked like this. And this is a nice thing. And uh, I don't know if that's <laughs> vandalism. Is that vandalism, or is that the way they make their ends? I don't know. Huh? No, I think yeah. it's an N. I think they went capital N on that. 
and it looks like it's people. a weird capital N, but <laughs> that's great work. <laughs> that is outstanding. <laughs> dirty penis. It looks like dirty penis. Don't mind uh, a do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this next one, uh, Dave sent this one in. Uh, Dave with the uh, the big lip. He had the um, the swollen lip from shellfish those, reaction. From the, yeah, shellfish reaction. Um, he, he's from Michigan. He's from Grand Rapids, and he went up to this other, the city up north, uh, northern Michigan, I think it is, uh, called. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to flip the page here. Oh, I gotta zoom out. God damn it! All right, they went up to Trufont. It's the stump fence capital of the United <laughs> States. <laughs> wow! And I looked up what a stump fence was, and it's exactly that. It's a fence with a bunch of stumps lined up. Oh, and man. it looks it looks terrible. It doesn't look good at all, and I don't think it really keeps much out because stumps aren't that tall. So um, I looked up Trufant. Then they have stump fence days in September, Ooh. where they have like a beer tent and they, they have a bingo tent, and they uh, they have know, a Masonic of... Center at all, or yeah, it's that yeah. way. Yeah, oh. it's that way. Yeah. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. I think if we can each donate 15 or more stump fences, we can get our own shelf at their museum. <laughs> so send them in. It's 117 9th Street, 102. Um, all right. This last one was sent in by Rick, uh, who does, uh, uh, what's his, consumption optional. And uh, he sent me this a long time ago, and I just found the photo, and it is gold. I think he was at a library or somewhere, and uh, books for our soldiers. And you can throw your old <laughs> books in. <laughs> Look at the top book. Michael this... Fulton, the soul of it all. <laughs> well, thank God our troops can be entertained there on the front lines. Yep, yep. I <laughs> can just great. see them. Yep, in the foxholes. Okay. Yeah. Fox yeah, the foxholes, just, it's a page turner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just dog ear it and try to, and then write a letter to your sweetheart. Uh-huh. Wow. Uh, those are my nice things. Great things. Nice, very nice things. Uh, I've got a couple. Everyone, of course, remembers the, um, the uh, classic Russian children's video. And this is the correct pronunciation, Anna Bin Wap, yep. <laughs> which uh, translates into the lavender ball. We went through, watched a lot of it uh, in the first year of VCR Party. Um, there's a, a woman um, who calls herself VHS Girl. She's on Instagram as VHS Girl. And she makes art. We first saw her at VH Festival in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina, her work. She, she takes wood blocks and recreates VHS covers um, by painting them. And she takes commissions. So um, we all saw that one. Uh, Anna Ben Wap, we all remember that one. Here is the cover she made out of uh, paint and wood. And oh, you can, that's awesome. Yeah, and then you, you can hang it up on your, on your walls. And then you can even get like series of them and she sent two bonus ones that i'll figure out a way to raffle off eventually i just don't want to be scrutinized too much this is a uh, nightmare on elm street dream warriors uh, oh, so that's actually made out of wood that's not an actual vhs tape it's that's made out of art. wood yeah you can see the wood on the back that's and, cool and this one i don't know if I, I might want to keep this one but it's uh vanilla ice cool as ice that she's painted and it's just like faithful yeah. recreations of the covers and like I, I started off with Anna Ben Wap, but I figured there's so many more we could do. I mean, bunion surgery, the sky's the limit, really. Women's Guide to Firearms. <laughs> exactly. Uh... So that was just a little nice thing that uh, uh, VHS girl. And the other thing, this came on Instagram, in, and uh, this was unsolicited. We didn't uh, say, I don't think we were even tagged in this, but I found it somehow. Um, this is an action figure of McSee complete with the old wrapper made into the cardboard Man. backing and so uh good. yeah and you can zoom in and we sent this to uh richard who played mcsee and he was like he just said stop because <laughs> <laughs> look at this this is like he's got his little cleaning rag he's about to say wow right there <laughs> That's and, uh, incredible. Yeah, I, I love sending this stuff to richard now that we're friends with him and he, his responses are always just like Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, we, 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 said, we sent him the trading cards last week. He, we, somebody put him on a trading card, and he was just like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. He was just like, this has got to stop. Which is the right response. So, yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, if you have nice things, send them to us at info at foundfootagefest.com. 
Nick, can you, can you text your dad or, or the, the family text thread and just ask, ask specifically your dad if he had something against Gerald McCraney? Because this, because uh, Major Dad, it was a, it was a comedy. It was considered yeah. a comedy more than it was a, I think, family drama. Okay. So maybe, then, maybe it was a little bit of both. I mean, maybe it was like in the uh, Family Ties world of, which I know you guys watch Family Ties. Of course. Yeah. So I'm going to say, Dad, did you have something against Gerald McCraney? Major Dad was a sitcom, and we watched every sitcom. Perfect. Okay. And say, and please respond quickly because we don't have much time left. Please, please respond <laughs> as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. Love you, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for lending me your car. <laughs> Uh, okay, I think we might have to skip cyber videos because we're already running really long. I, I know, but can I show an IMG? Yeah, this week, okay. I, I, I organized all my IMGs. And just a quick uh, reminder what an IMG is. If you type an IMG and then four numbers into YouTube, into a search, you get videos that weren't intended to be uploaded. And you get, there's just some gold there. If It reminds Nick and I of, of going through thrift stores and finding videos, finding like home movies or something that people didn't intend to show people and it's so much fun and there's one so I, sh I showed a few last week uh alicia in toronto she sent me a follow-up email saying i just wanted to make sure that you got this because i because you have to see it and uh i'm glad that she did because it it slipped through the cracks and i hadn't seen it and uh, it's img 8120 has 18 views alicia thinks she has all the views she thinks all 18 are hers. And uh, she called it Take a Vacation from Your Vacation. Um, here it is. Intriguing title. Uh, well, Marcus, do you see the way the dry ice machine shoots the... Uh, see that? I'm not saying it's sexual or anything, but... Um, Got the reggae in the background, the sun coming in. All right, got the guitar out. Got some art going. And yes, a second, a second dry ice machine. Uh, also called a humidifier. But uh, yeah, man, come on. Take a vacation from your vacation. <laughs> Just gold. Just I mean, pure gold. Was that, was that Matthew McConaughey's whole movie? That was incredible. <laughs> got some reggae uh, going on. No, you said I got some art going on. Art going on. <laughs> and two, two hung dry up on ice machines. Those are clearly not dry ice machines. He had some things hung up on the wall, and he said he had some art going on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's another one that needs to be studied. I want to do uh, a deconstruction of IMGs, too. Like, remember the Taco Bell one? Well, there's two different things happening on the right side of the screen, the left side of the screen. I want to deconstruct first the right side of the screen. Then I'm going to deconstruct the left side of the screen. Then we're going to watch them all together and we're going to watch it for the first time. It's going to feel like we're watching it for the first time. Um, so that's coming up, yeah. coming up next week. Um, okay. And so for the people who don't like us talking over the videos, you're out of luck. I'm sorry. Find another show. Do people not like us when we uh, talk over the videos? No, we also get feedback about that. Okay. Um, um but uh, here's, a, here's a, another thing we've started doing is birthdays. If, birthday, mm -hmm. if, it's, if your birthday's here, um, I'm already regretting doing this. We just don't have that much birthday footage to show you. But uh, we, hopefully... We regret, no, no, no. We can find some. We can, we can find something unique. So um, Adam's birthday is coming up. His wife, Chelsea, wrote in and said, quote, I think the only thing that will make him happy is if Nick could call and get Bazingas to wish him a happy birthday. It would mean a lot to him to hear it from the Bazinga staff. And to make the birthday boy's dream come true. Um, so, Chelsea, I can't turn down a request. Bazinga's, of course, is the bar in Janesville, Wisconsin, uh, the Bar and Grill, named after the catchphrase of somebody from... Big Bang Theory. Did Big your Bang family Theory, not watch that right? one either? No. I, that, well, I don't have to text my dad. By the way, I heard back from him, but I'm going to wait to call. I'm going to call Bazinga's right now. I have their number handy. And I uh, will... We'll hopefully get your birthday wish. Come on. Baby needs new. Good evening. Thank you for calling.
Hi, Mazinga. How can yes. I help you? Hey, it's uh, my buddy Adam's birthday. He can't make it in because he's quarantined, but he, he loves Bazinga. Could you guys just wish him a happy birthday? Happy birthday? Yeah, just say happy birthday, Adam, from Bazinga. Happy birthday, Adam, from Bazinga. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great night. You too. Thanks. Oh. God damn it. Those guys are great. Most See, Bert... <laughs> birthday wishes do come true here on VCR Party. This is the best segment. I know, Nick, you're regretting it. I'm looking forward to the yeah. segment. Yeah. Look at this. Look at it. We can call bazingas. We can get birthday wishes for people. Yeah, like we, you're right. We just have to get creative. Yeah, we're not just going to show videos. Well, we've it's been. Not like it's, it's not like this is a video show or anything. <laughs> no. We've been uh, postponing this for a while, but I do want to get to um, the, the mixes where people are remixing um, clips from the show. And. Um, like that's why we played uh, TikTok, so somebody could remix that. Um, and we we're going to post a new segment. First, I want to play an old segment from uh, Joe Blevins. Has been an all-star for us. He did one based on a an FBI warning that had the weirdest, drugged out, slowed down, chopped and screwed soundtrack to it. And uh, he he did kind of like a well, I'll just play what he did, and we put this over some FBI warnings that used to open our show. Sometimes I feel I've got to run away, I've got to get away from the pain you drive into the heart of me, the love me shall seems to go nowhere, and I've lost my light, or I toss and turn. That's it. So, oh, Joe it's so, fucking, so fucking cool. Masterful. Both of them, Mary Worth. That's the name of his uh, blog. Oh, and uh, so... check him out. Amazing work. Oh, man. That's so good. Um, wow. That's good stuff. Um, all right. What are we doing next? We got some, some reports from the Wonderverse. Oh, no, Nick. What, what's your dad's thing? Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, he said, never watched or inflicted on innocent children. I had some standards. So oh, I, I don't know. That. This is open to rift in the family. It's going to be a scintillating documentary. Capturing the Prewers. Yep. <laughs> Major bad. Uh, Major daddy's car. Uh, Major <laughs> daddy. Major daddy. <gasps> because you know what? No, here's, here's what the documentary is going to be about. It's going to be called Major Daddy because your dad – did dictate what shows you guys wouldn't wouldn't watch. In a way, he was like your drill sergeant for your family. He was your major daddy. And you call your dad daddy, too. So that's, there's that. That's right. He rolled the TV with an iron fist. Um, Sounds orgasmic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, would, I wouldn't describe it that way, but yeah. <laughs> uh, now do we have any reports from the Melindaverse? That's the Facebook group that uh, talks about the show and other related things. Sure. You want me to uh, give the... Uh report about let's, let's do it baby rapper so all right so we received uh, an email recently from uh bob from hull in the uk um he did send a whiz bang dossier about the beloved vcr party live staple uh baby rapper now th th this was a very deep dive he was intrigued bob was intrigued by the rudimentary motion capture used to create the titular character and in case you just woke up from a coma baby rapper is a karaoke video that features a rapping baby um animated through the most advanced technology available in 98 and of course baby rapper is hip-hop dancing to songs by the most legendary hip-hop group the beatles <laughs> and uh i believe we have a little clip because some people may not have seen it 
Um, I don't know if we're getting audio. Nope. Did the thing. Was he a rapper, though? There's zero raps in here. Was he a baby? Yeah. <laughs> This is one of my favorite songs, and it's very hard to watch it in this form. But... Favorite rap? Yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, so Bob did what any good VHS detective does. He looked at the credits to begin his investigation into the team behind it. So he found three big names here. You've got Chris Walker, Dan Dalton, and uh, Cool Pockets. Okay. <laughs> so um, That's also your nickname too, right? Uh, yes, but I don't have a space in mine. I'm just. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. You do the underscore. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. So continue. So Bob did uh, watch a clip of Baby Rapper on YouTube and he, and he noticed that um, Dan Dalton himself had actually commented on it on the YouTube page. And um, he, he wrote the Baby Rapper theme. I should mention also first that. Um, Melinda Lucia also sent in the same tip recently, uh, a, a few weeks before. But I just, you know, I, I don't want to get any angry emails about this. <laughs> um, but uh, Dan mentioned that he hoped his, uh, that karaoke could be used to help kids learn to read. He also mentioned that he'd posted a clip of the Late Show in which Letterman showed one of the other videos he did on his goofy VHS segment. Um, and uh, Dan Dalton actually appears in this clip. So, really? Yes. So. Oh. Okay. Here we have learn along with video Dan Ranger. <laughs> hey, Buckaroos, you're real cool cat. You got a little of this and a lot of that. I'm gonna play some red hot songs. Come on, everybody, let's sing along. Hands up, chicka chicka, chicka chicka. Hands down, chicka chicka, chicka chicka. Hands side, chicka chicka, chicka chicka. Hands side, chicka chicka, chicka chicka. Honey, I think it's time to transfer the kids to a private school. There's life after the village people. So, so that's Dan Dalton. That's not. At first, I thought that was Brian Stack. In a bit, it's not. This is Dan Dalton. Uh, Brian Stack is a comedian. You probably know him from Colbert. Uh, he does a lot of the bits on there. Um, and since Found Footage Festival inherited Letterman's video, there's a chance that you have this in your collection already. It's possible. I should ask Steve, uh, our Letterman pal, who used to curate the... Um used to curate the Dave's video collection segment. Why? Because I think I would have remembered this one. I, think I don't remember one, this one at all. This, I've this never probably seen this slipped one. through the cracks. I've never but, seen this run the office or anything. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, anyhow, Dan Dalton also made the following fan video for Notre Dame football. He went to Notre Dame. <laughs> and it's of a piece. Him high, him low, go Irish, go. Play like the champion today. So you can see that, that that song, both of the songs we just heard are not dissimilar from the baby rapper theme. So it's, I can hear the influences. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So uh, next up, uh, Bob looked for the dancer known as Cool Pockets and found the following video. This is going to shock you, hopefully. I can't wait. Down the left is Cool Pockets. Do those moves look, those moves look familiar, right? Yes. That's, yes. That is Baby Rapper. Now, Cool Pockets is on Twitter, and he has a web page, so I'll be getting in touch with him. But one thing I noticed is that Cool Pockets, uh, at Cool Pockets, and at CoolPockets.com, he, uh, he has um, 261 tweets and one follower. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> um, that is interesting. And he's following you... one, too. Yes. Yeah, so I, I don't know. What is I, I, also, also interesting? What is also interesting is that his brother, not him, was uh, the choreographer. There are many questions T I have to ask. Cool yeah. <laughs> oh, his brother was the choreographer. Well, yeah. I mean, he probably he knew what he was capable of doing. I'm just, and it yeah, probably worked well, well as a team. Yeah. It's just interesting that he's not a co-choreographer -chore or anything like that. But anyway, keep going, George. Sorry to interrupt. No, no. It's, 
good observation. Now the, the last person on the list is uh, Chris Walker. And I, um, if you look up Chris Walker, you'll find that he ran a studio or runs a studio called Modern Cartoons. I can't find anything else about it. And this webpage hasn't changed, I don't think, since like the early aughts. Hmm. Um, but How modern are these cartoons then? <laughs> I'll ask him. Modernish okay. cartoons. Okay. But he, but he had an article in about him in the New York Times about his motion pack motion capture technology. So this was like high profile stuff. For real? Uh, yeah. Featured in the New York Times about it. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, the big reveal here is that um, at Nick's request, um, I had actually found uh, Chris uh, Chris's Chris Walker's contact information last year. I emailed him, didn't hear back. I also found Dan Dalton's uh, information last year, emailed him, didn't hear anything back. But here's where Bob really shown, he found out why Dan Dalton didn't get back to me. It turns out that Dan Dalton passed away in 2017. So we were too late. Oh. Um, was Dr. Oh. Chihuahua there? But uh, it was a crossover that never <laughs> okay. sequel that never happened. But um, for his efforts, he wins. Bob from Hull receives the designation of Creep of the Week. We've only touched on some of the things he found. There's so much out there. Uh, but he the, he also receives a, a su lifetime supply of gratitude from us. And, oh, absolutely. And this JPEG, <laughs> he's it's available to him also. Um, so. If anybody wants the full deep dive of what Bob, what Bob sent us, like I'd be happy to forward it on to you. It's a very lengthy email. There's a lot of links. It's very thorough yes. and it's really good. And I read through the whole thing. And uh, George, one thing, uh, the Cool Pockets, that video where he's dancing with that one guy, that guy mm -hmm. on the right was from Booyah Tribe. I don't know if you're familiar with Booyah Tribe. By name only. Okay, yeah, yeah. The guy on the right was from Booyah Tribe. Wow, so Cool uh, Pockets, again, I have a lot of questions for Cool Pockets. But there's just so much other small stuff like that along the way. So info at foundfootagefest.com. Reach out to us. I'd be happy to forward the email. We along. have the best viewers, so thank you for uh, doing that research for us. And uh, we're rewarding Patreon backers at the $10 level with a bonus episode every week. Um, what are we doing this Thursday? I have no idea. Okay. I really don't know. I'm still here. I don't have access to the library. It's just stuff that's on my hard drive. Someone suggested point. the CVS training video. I don't know how long I that is. I have all that. I have all that. It's, it's good. It's not okay. great. I, I wonder if there's something better. Maybe like a, a different training video. Maybe like the Jewel Osco training video. We can have that would be good. I have that bonus. captured. Yeah. We could do a Jewel Osco video. Well, we'll do it. Let's say we'll just do a training video of some sort this Thursday. It'll be good. Well, uh, let, let's, let's throw in maybe. Maybe. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Maybe. Reminder, yeah. computer beach party tickets are on sale now. I uh, hope to see you on August 15th. Frenchie and the Creep coming out this week? Yes. Okay. So that's tomorrow Tomorrow night at 9. That'll drop. Yep. Anything we, to tease with that? Anything yeah. like uh, – you teasing anything? Um, you'll be smarter for watching it. Okay. Hmm. Okay. And of course, Quarantine Classics on Saturday, we have a special guest, Emmy Blotnick, who has some terrible photos of herself she's going to show. Uh, we've had Emmy on a comedian before, and uh, she's delightful, so that should be fun. And what are we going to go out on? Well, uh, wait, but before we do that, I want to show last week's, on Thursday, we did an EP, a, a VCR yeah. Party EP, of all the safety videos that we've had in our collection from uh, Federated Mutual or whatever, Aurora Pictures. And uh, there's one that I had found while doing it uh, on, this, on this website that we'd never shown before. I figured I'd just show like a quick 15 seconds from it. Just okay. to, if you haven't seen the EP mode, sign up to be $10 patrons for this video alone. Um, I don't know who made it, but it's so good. Here it is. Pretty brutal, it, and it's like set to a Portishead song. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a lovemaking song. Um, all right, uh, well, that, I believe that's all. That's it, right? That's all. That's it on my end. Uh, you guys got anything else? We good? That's all. If if we tried harder, 
We'll be right back right after that, I guess. If, uh, if we had been prepared, we could have done better. Everybody's a puppet when they're dead. Oh, wait, 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 George, before you do it, what are we going out on? Oh, we're going out on a baby rapper credit. Wait, wait, wait. Before we say anything else, then, if we have this hold, George, I just want to say, very impressive. I commend you for leaving your email in on all the, your phone number in on all those emails so that oh, every millennial can call. <laughs> every millennial call George and let him know what you think. Text him at all hours. He loves the attention. Now, all uh-huh. our numbers have been given out except Steve's. So, uh... <laughs> he's just a Oh, you mean Steve? So. <laughs> uh,. George, there's no reason. I, you've got to do it yourself, or Joe and Nick have to do it to each other. That's it. <laughs> I'm awake. I'm alive. My leg is a little sore. What's that one from? Uh, the, the unspectacular. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> all right, that's all. That's it. return, Dr. Selner will complete the bunion surgery. Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing. All right, I gotta go. That's all. That's it. Let me see that one. Rocks are done. Gotta sleep. Bye. That's it. That it done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? My nose is for yuck anymore. That's all I'm doing. We'll be right back right after that. And Kurt Polster, the real great guy.